what is up guys this is max square and i've been getting a lot of requests lately to do a tutorial on a basic intro and animation in after effects so i decided to finally do it and this is what we're going to be making today So it's very simple and I know the colors might look a little weird, but that's just because After Effects exported it very weirdly. It is actually a nicer green when we get in there. Uh, so yeah, this is what we're going to be making, so let's just jump right into it. So opening up After Effects, we're going to create a new composition. Doesn't matter what you name it, make sure it is 1920 by 1080 and it's going to be about 6 seconds. And while we're here, let's go ahead and set the background color to hashtag 2B, 2B, 2B. Now it's not actually hashtag, it's actually hex color, but you may or may not know that. I'm not a Twitter nerd, just throwing that out there. So click OK, and let's start making some pretty cool stuff. So go ahead and create a new shape layer. So you just right click on your composition and then create shape layer. Then go up to your shapes and select the ellipse tool and click anywhere on the preview and hold down shift to create a perfect circle. So make it kind of big, kind of small. Uh, I'll give you the exact things you want to make it. Uh, make it about six, uh, let's make it 600 by 600 pickle, pick, pickle, <laughs> pixels. Wow, I just had dinner. I'm, I'm still in the food mindset, you know. So uh, I know I'm very weird. Okay, so so we want to so want to make sure this is a transparent fill. So to do that, select the fill text and then select the white uh, rectangle with the red line through it to make it transparent and we're going to add a stroke so we're going to select that and five pixels uh, is probably good for this and you can see this is the green i'm using it's a little nicer it's not as dull than what you saw at the beginning so we want to name this to circle dashed uh, or we can name it dashed circle just to be a little easier. So once we've done that, go into your dash circle property. So just drop down that, drop down contents, ellipse one, and then stroke one. And then where it says dash, you want to add one and then set the dash to 25. That's a pretty nice dash and it looks pretty cool in an overall animation. Once you've done that, go to add and then select trim paths. Paths. I've been struggling to say that word. Don't judge me. So go ahead and bring the end percentage to zero and then click the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Go to 20 frames and bring it up to 100. Now you'll see if we hit play, wherever my preview, if we hit play, you'll notice it just fills up. Very, very basic. I'm actually going to set this to maybe 20. Uh, so yeah, maybe, maybe set it to about 22 and that'll give it a nicer, uh, like perfect circle look. You may have noticed when we said it's 25, we had two uh, overlapping at the top, uh, just OCD problems. So now just before we do anything else, we want to add a repeater to this shape layer. So go to the repeater properties and then also go to the transform repeater properties just so we can see it's laid out. So keep the copies at a uh, three and then we want to bring the uh, position here to zero, zero. So they're overlapping. So we want to keep this at a hundred uh, for now. We won't do any animation for that repeater just yet. We want to do the rest of the fading up and all that stuff first. So now instead of going through and closing all these dropdowns, just hold the command key and hit the top little drop down thing. That way we can just close all of the little tabs. So now we want to add the filled in circle that kind of pops up in the middle. So go ahead and select your ellipse tool once again. Make sure your fill and your stroke are pretty much just inverted. So you want to have the fill to that green color, which by the way is uh, the hex color 2FDC99 if you wanted to know that. And then just add a transparent stroke. Once that is done, make a ellipse that has some margin between the two little circles. Uh, something like that is good. You can even make it a little bigger. Um, so yeah, just play around with that. And then you want to center your anchor points and just align that ellipse to the center. We can rename our layer to filled circle just so we can have some organization. Always good to stay organized. Now we want this circle to pop up halfway between uh, this stroke being filled. So just go to 10 frames if you keyframed the original uh, circle at 20 frames. 
select the filled circle layer, select S on your keyboard, keyboard which, excuse me, which will bring up your scale properties, and then set this to zero, and then click the stopwatch, go to probably 20 frames and go to 100. Then we want to easy ease this one more, one more time. So we want to right click keyframe assistant, easy ease. And this always just adds a nicer effect. Let's go ahead and preview our animation so far. And so that's looking pretty cool. So let's go ahead and add the little dashes that explode when the circle reaches its uh, full scale. So let's go ahead and select our rectangle tool from our shapes uh, object. And we want to create a very thin, thin rectangle. Nothing too tall or thick. Something like that is good. Um, maybe even a little uh, shorter. Just make the size maybe two and the height about 50. So I'm gonna be using a height of 50 and a width of five. So to access that one more time, you wanna go down to the uh, shape layer contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and then you can edit the size. So we're gonna name this layer explosion, and uh, then we wanna add a repeater. So just select add repeater. And then we wanna go down and add 10 copies. So that'll do that. I'm gonna add a rotation of 36, and it's gonna look really jumbled. No need to worry about that. Set the position to zero. And then after that, you want to go to the rectangle uh, scale here. Uh, so then after that, you wanna select your main explosion layer and select scale. So now we're gonna actually just keep this hidden behind this one circle and we're gonna hit a keyframe there. You can even set it to about 60%. That looks pretty hidden to me. Go to uh, one second or 30 frames and set this to 90. 90% scale, uh, because when we did 100, it was too much around. Um, so that looks pretty good there. So now, obviously, when we go to the beginning, our circle isn't there, so our little dashes or explosion is gonna be just sitting there awkwardly. So to fix this problem, we wanna go to 20 frames, select our explosion layer, and then select the Alt and left brackets, and that'll just cut that layer to the beginning of where we had our uh, timeline cursor thing. So let's preview it one more time just to see everything overall. Well, that's looking pretty cool. Uh, now we wanna fix this explosion because it happens kind of awkwardly uh, and very slowly actually. So we wanna keyframe this to easy ease. And let's just zoom in a bit. And uh, if this looks slow to you, don't worry about that. Uh, that's just because we're previewing it and it slows it down for you to get more detailed. But when we do an overall preview, it's gonna run a lot faster. So let's start this at 15 frames. And of course, our layer isn't there yet, so we wanna do the alt bracket again with that layer selected, so it'll move the beginning to that point. So once again, our scale is too small, so just scale this down until it hides, and let's see how this looks. That's looking pretty cool. Now as it hits 25 frames, we wanna scale up this original dash circle. Shirk circles, wow, excuse me. And now we're gonna start editing that repeater that we added at the beginning of our animation. So we wanna to go to the scale and set a keyframe and then go to five frames. So it'll be uh, 20 frame, or excuse me, 10 frames in all. Look at me trying to do math late at night. And then we're gonna scale this up till it just goes off the screen. And that's about 431%. So if you wanna be following along with that. Now we still have our original dash circle. So to do that, we wanna to go to our ellipse path, go to size and set a keyframe where the beginning of our repeater scale starts and then just scale it up with the rest of them until again, it disappears. So let's take a look at our animation once more. So that's looking pretty cool. Now uh, this finishes at five frames. So at five frames, we wanna move this whole object down. So select the explosion and filled circle and just go to P on your keyboard and that'll bring up your position properties. So set a keyframe at uh, one second, five frames and go to 15 frames and drag this down till it's uh, off the screen. 
and that's uh, 1371, uh, something around there should be good. So make sure it's just completely off the screen. I'm gonna do 1500 to make sure it's completely off. So once that is off, halfway through, which should be about 10 frames, or uh, yeah, 10 frames, where it's kind of cut off, so you should have about five little dashes at the top, so it looks like a little sun. So now we wanna create that layer that just kind of explodes and fills the whole screen with a green. So to do that, we wanna create another shape layer. Yes, we're gonna create another one. We're gonna name this, uh, what should we name this? Let's name this transition. I know, I'm very, very, oh, I can't even spell. I'm very, very original with my titles. Don't, don't get me wrong. So we're gonna fill this up uh, with that green color. So the easiest way to do that is to just double click on your rectangle tool and it'll automatically size it to your composition. Now we wanna use this anchor point and set it to the bottom middle. So it should be down here. Make sure you have it selected and then do that. And then go to your scale, set it to zero, set a keyframe, go to 20 frames and scale it to 100. So now as you're watching it, you'll see it comes from the bottom right where our little circle or sun uh, leaves off. So now we're gonna add that little diamond pattern that we saw on this green layer. So just copy and paste or duplicate that transition layer twice. And we're gonna name this pattern one and pattern two. Now select both of those pattern layers, select U and deselect that scale uh, animation so it doesn't scale up or anything like that. So it's just a still image. Go into your effects and presets window and search for Venetian blinds and just drag that right onto your pattern. And we're just gonna edit the pattern one and then we'll go, we're gonna copy and paste it. So go to effects, Venetian blinds and go to 100%. Now we wanna make the fill color 2B, or yeah, 2B, 2B, 2B. So it's that like grayish kind of pattern. We wanna set the transition completion to 50%. Now you won't be seeing anything, that's just because we're hidden behind that other pattern. So copy and paste that pattern onto the other one. And uh, just before we do anything else, make sure the Venetian blinds uh, direction is set to 45 go to the other one and make sure it's set to negative 45. Now this looks really crazy and it's starting to hurt my eyes. So let's put the width at 50 here and the same for the other one. And you'll see that creates a nice little effect. So select your pattern one and pattern two and select T on your keyboard. That'll bring up your opacity. Set this to 50. And that's looking pretty cool. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but you can get it down to what you want it to look like but that's the rough idea. So now this looks crazy now, our whole animation is ruined. Uh, so what we wanna do is only show this when our main square kinda just pops up. So wherever that is, for me it's about 11 frames, uh, one second in 11 frames, and do that little alt bracket key trick that I showed you all. So now if we go back, it's back to normal. So it should only appear here, and we also wanna scale that up. So remember when I told you to deselect that? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go back. So uh, the easiest way is just go to your transition layer, copy it, select pattern one and pattern two, and duplicate and paste it. My words are all over the place today. And there you go. That's all smooth and whatnot. So once this finishes, which is about 25 frames, we're gonna add our text. So we're gonna go two seconds in our timeline and select our text tool. And here's where we're gonna add our cool text. So I'm gonna type in Mac Square. And I'm using the Grand Hotel font, which is a really nice script font. Go back to your selection tool and align this to the center of your composition. Then we wanna add that Venetian blinds to our text. And we wanna animate this to go from 0% to 100% so that it kinda of just appears. So here at 25 frames, which should be five frames before two seconds, set a keyframe with 100%. So it should disappear. And then go to five frames after two seconds and bring this to zero. 
and then jump to two seconds just so we can see how that looks. I might put the width at 10 just so we get some smaller lines. So that's looking pretty cool. And then after that, uh, we're pretty much done. Now, if you want to fade this out, just do the same thing with the Venetian blinds, except reverse it. So maybe at five frames, set a keyframe for 0%, and then go to six uh, seconds, and then go to 100%. So now it's going out, just like that. Now, I added that music in here. That music is Lucid Truth by Blackmill, if you want to use that. It's a pretty awesome dubstep song. Uh, so you can add that in, but that is the whole animation from start to finish. So let's just do a RAM preview so we can see how this looks. And that's our animation. It's looking pretty cool. Of course, you could add anything you would like, some extra text here, maybe a logo. Uh, that's why I left so much margin. Now, the whole animation on the whole is probably three, four seconds. So uh, yeah, that's that's how to do it. Well guys, that's the tutorial. I, I, I feel like I'm forgetting something, and if I am, I really do apologize. But that should give you some pretty cool techniques to use in After Effects, and should just give you a nicer, more comfortable feeling when you start to get into creating your own animation. So I hope this helped you. If so, please be sure to click that like button. Also subscribe for more tutorials and reviews like this one, and be sure to drop me a comment down below. Thanks again guys, and I will see you in my next video.